Hello everyone, welcome again to another Word for Today with Ray. Again, as always, so happy to have you with me today, and I pray that the Lord is blessing you with His Word and the power of His Word in your life as you study and learn about Him. We want to go to Him in prayer and ask Him, as always, to bless our time together. Pray with me, if you will. Heavenly Father, it is so great to know that the God of the universe, the Creator of all things, loves us. You love us so much that you gave us your son, Jesus, to be our Savior. And in addition to that, you gave us your word. And we're studying your word again today so that we might come to know you more, know more about Jesus, know more about your ways. So we ask you by your Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us into all truth and to empower us to live according to that truth so that our lives may be pleasing to you. We bless you today, Lord. We are so thankful for you and your word. And we are so in Jesus' name. Amen. The title to today's lesson is Love in the Spirit. It's taken from the book of Colossians chapter 1 and verse 8. After opening his letter by commending the church members in Colossae for their faith in Christ Jesus, their love to all the saints, and the hope which is laid up in heaven for you, Paul the Apostle directed their attention toward their faithful minister and his fellow servant, Epaphras. Epaphras visited Paul while he was in prison in Rome. And in chapter 1 and verse 8 of Paul's letter to the Colossians, we discover one of the reasons for Epaphras' visit. We read, Who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. The verse says, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit? When Epaphras came to Paul, he declared or made manifest, made known by relating, gave to understand, indicated or signified unto Paul and those with him your love, which is the Greek word agapeo, which means affection, goodwill, love, benevolence, brotherly love, and unconditional love. This agape love was in the Spirit which is where true love is found as opposed to love in the flesh. Let us notice the word spirit is capitalized, which indicates Paul's reference to the Holy Spirit of God. There is no greater love that can be realized than the one which resides in a relationship with the Holy Spirit of God. Although the words in this verse are few, they are impact-filled when we consider them. First, do others tell of our love in the Spirit? Have we experienced what love in the Spirit is like? Would others deem us to have unconditional love derived from our relationship with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit? Perhaps as we meditate upon this verse, we will benefit by going to the Lord in prayer, asking Him to reveal whether we have the love of His Spirit residing within us. May the Lord Jesus help us to be his love in the Spirit representatives in this world. Next time, Paul will write about a special prayer for the Colossian church. So read ahead and we shall join together then. Until tomorrow, there is more. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace as you continue to study his word in Jesus' name.